All right, this time we're going to be talking about Spain and Portugal, uh, what we call the Iberian Peninsula. This is yet another area of Europe that has a very deep history with wine. Uh, some of the more extreme estimates go back probably three or 4,000 BC. Spanish wine was relatively rustic up until the mid 1800s uh, when a bunch of uh, uh, Frenchmen showed up in Rioja and basically taught the Spanish how to make wine like they did. With the exception of a corner in the northwest part of Spain, most of Spain is hot and dry. Uh, it actually gets hotter and drier as we go from that northwest corner down to the southeast. Thankfully, a lot of these areas are also fairly hilly, uh, so these higher altitude parts uh, actually make it possible to make uh, nicely balanced wines. But a general kind of statement about Spanish wine is that it tends to be a little bit more full-bodied and vivacious and kind of warm-blooded than, say, something from France or Italy. Spain's classification system is pretty simple. Uh, it's two-part. There's the DO, the Denominación uh, Origen, and the DOCA, which is Denominación Origen Calefada, which means it's qualified. Uh, that's a higher level designation, uh, and there are only two. There's Rioja and Priorat. Beyond these regional appellations, there are also classifications for aging. Uh, so there's first Joven, which is basically means young and is pretty much uh, unaged wine. Uh, beyond that, there's Crianza. Uh, above that, Reserva, and then uh, further up the chain, there's Gran Reserva, which are the, the top wines uh, that necessarily need the most age before release. Well, by far, the most important wines to know in Spain uh, are those of Rioja. Rioja is in the north center of the country. It is the place where the, the French folks showed up and showed them how to make wine uh, the way that they did. It's also where we find the most classic kind of style of, of wine in Spain. There are both reds and whites, with the reds being a little bit more famous. The reds are based mostly on the Tempranillo grape. Tempranillo is consequently also probably the most important grape in Spain. And then the Tempranillo grape is usually blended with a little bit of something else. Uh, in many cases, a grape called Mazuelo and, and sometimes Graciano and sometimes Garnacha, which is the same thing as Grenache. The whites of Rioja are usually based on the Vera grape. That grape might be blended with some other more obscure grapes from this area. Uh, but it's usually just that one. One of the classic earmarks of wines from Rioja has to do with oak usage, uh, with the very traditional wines showing uh, oak notes of coconut and vanilla in interaction with the uh, more pleasant red fruits of uh, Tempranillo. The Gran Reserva level with the traditional wines can be uh, several years of oak aging, um, and uh, it's a very particular, unusual kind of style that we only see really here in Rioja. The next most important area of Spain is Ribera del Duero. Ribera del Duero is a place where we also found the influence of French winemakers in the middle 1800s, so much so that they actually brought a lot of Bordeaux varieties and planted them here. And there are grapes that are like Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Merlot, that have become kind of classic for the area and are often blended with Tempranillo. In Ribera del Duero, they call Tempranillo Tinto Fino. Uh, in fact, there are a lot of different names for Tempranillo all over Spain. Ribera del Duero is home to a couple of very important wines, the main one being Vega Sicilia, which is a a state that for a very long time was Spain's most expensive wine uh, and generally considered uh, Spain's greatest. By the 90s, Vega Sicilia had been eclipsed by a wine called Pingus. Pingus is now uh, Spain's most expensive wine. Both of those are fairly uh, hugely bodied um, blends of Tempranillo and Bordeaux varieties and are a stark contrast to the other most famous Roberto Duero wine, uh, which is Tinto Pesquera. Uh, by a fellow named Alejandro Fernandez. That's 100% Tinto Fino and feels almost more like some of those really traditional Rioja wines than it does like uh, Vega or Pingus. The third most important place to look in Spain is Priorato or Priorat. Uh, Priorat is an area that's been making wine for a very long time but was uh, very rustic up until probably the 1990s. The area was resurrected by a fellow named René Barbier and a few of his friends. Uh, and they found a whole lot of old plantings of Garnacha uh, and Carignano, which is the same thing as Carignan. Took those, made some plantings of some other varieties like uh, Cabernet, Merlot, etc. Uh, and then uh, started making some very dark flavored, powerful, um, intensely minerally wines. Uh, this is because the area is not only hot and dry, but also has a very particular, very rich mineral soil type called Licorella, which is a, a type of black slate. Maybe the most exciting part of Spain these days is in the northwest. And this is that more green area of Spain that I mentioned before, the major part of which is called Galicia, the hard lisping part of Spain. The main grapes here are certainly Albariño, which is a beautiful white grape that makes slightly floral, 
peachy, good acidity uh, white wines. In addition to that, we also have the Mincia grape, or Minthea as they pronounce it. That typically makes some medium plus bodied wines with a fair bit of sort of uh, floral kind of zesty character, um, often uh, a good amount of acidity, uh, really fun wines from, from that part of Spain these days. Another important wine to mention are the very classic sparkling wines called Cava. Uh, Cava refers to the, the cave where they make the wines. Uh, it's not an appellation necessarily uh, because it can be made pretty much anywhere in Spain. Uh, but most of it, uh, over 90% uh, of it in fact, uh, is made in a place called Penedes. Uh, which is over in the northeast corner of Spain. Another very important wine to note from Spain are the Sherries uh, from Jerez, uh, which is in the uh, southwest of Spain. Sherry is a very unusual style of fortified wine uh, that ranges from dry to sweet, uh, and it, there's a, a range of oxidization that happens too with those wines. So you have Fino, which is clear and clean and usually dry. You have Amontillado, uh, which gets a little darker in color because it's more oxidized and gets therefore nuttier in flavor as well. Uh, and then you have Oloroso, which is uh, very dark in color, uh, typically very nutty and rich, and usually has a little bit of sweetness too. Beyond those very classic parts of Spain, uh, we also have a lot of other small upcoming regions um, like Humilla uh, or Yecla, uh, these places where we found uh, pretty inexpensive wines with lots of fruit and lots of body and uh, it's a good place to get lots of flavor for not a lot of money. Uh, most of these places are in the uh, southeast of Spain where it's uh, especially hot and dry. Okay, so Portuguese wines are just like Spanish wines, right? Actually, no. The Portuguese tend to get pretty ruffled when you uh, assume their wines are the same as the Spanish. Historically, the two most important wines of Portugal have been the fortified wines of Port and Madeira. Port is usually a red dessert wine, although there are white versions as well. Port is named after the city of Porto, from which the, the wines usually make their trek to the other parts of Europe. But the wines are grown further inland in the Douro Valley. There are a few different styles of port. Uh, the most important is a vintage port, and beyond that there's also tawny ports and uh, LBV ports and a number of other sub-styles. Port is a very classic combination with chocolate. Sometimes it also pairs very well with blue cheese. Uh, and it's really kind of a very old world way to end a meal. Madeira is similar to port in that, it, that it's a uh, fortified wine that can sometimes be fairly sweet, uh, but it tends to lean a little bit more toward the dry side of things, uh, and it usually has a little bit more acidity than port. Also, Madeira is made with white grapes, so when it is made into wine uh, that is then fortified, oxidized, uh, and then also lightly cooked by uh, being left in uh, warm warehouses or out on docks, um, which is a part of a traditional process. Uh, the wine turns brown and gets a little bit uh, oxidized and nutty in flavor. Okay, so what did we learn about the Iberian Peninsula today? Hola. Um, hold on. I mean, hola. So Spain has a long history with wine. The classic areas are Rioja and Ribera del Duero, which is based on the Tempranillo grape. Then there's also Priorat, which its greatness is kind of recent. And then Galicia, which is best known for the crisp quality white wines that they have. And then Cava is Spain's answer to Champagne. And then Jerez made Sherry famous, which is whatever. I'm so much better than her. And then, um, let's see, Portugal is famous for its fortified wines like Port and Madeira. But their table wines are also good too, like Vino Verde, hashtag Vino Verde party.